The Dodgers aren't rebuilding. They haven't given up on the season, but they're doing a bit of a reset. The fact that they're able to do this and still have the best record in the National League is remarkable. We're going to speak to Andrew Friedman, but first, let's do a little digging in. The Dodgers are right now in a golden era. I don't know how many people really see this happening. It's one of the more dominant runs in the history of the game. They've made the postseason 10 straight years. Their win percentage dating back to 2017 equates to a 104 win season on average. 104. That's a six year stretch of utter dominance. Going back to 2015, they have the best win percentage of the game and by a wide margin. The Astros are number two at 59%. Dodgers over 62%. They're 37 games better than any other club in that span. Now, in eight seasons, they've won just one World Series title. They've won three pennants. They've made it to the League Championship Series five times. But it's still massive success, all-time success. The year before new ownership came in, the Dodgers were 10th in payroll. Not cheap, but there were also $100 million behind the number one Yankees that year. May of 2012, Mark Walter and the Guggenheim Group take over, and it's a whole new ball game. So it would change right away. 2013, new owners come in, and they are number one in payroll right away. 2015, the first year for the new GM, Andrew Friedman, they're number one, and they peak at a payroll of nearly $300 million. There it is, 300 even. Highest ever at that point. They would stay number one for five years, five years in a row. Now they step back a little bit here and there, but they are a perennial top spender. So this year, there's a difference. They're back to 250 million. They're back to fifth in payroll and a full $130 million behind the number one Mets. The Padres, the rising club in their own division, they've passed them in spending. Well, it's not a disgrace, but yeah, they're spending. But the Dodgers are not in a mode where they're far out in front of the pack anymore. This is a team that is used to going into different phases. They have constantly evolved, different types of clubs. There were the Adrian Gonzalez Dodgers, the Cody Bellinger Dodgers, then the Mookie Betts, Max Scherzer Dodgers. Always Clayton Kershaw starting, mostly Kenley Jansen closing. But this was an evolving powerhouse. Here is what I would call peak Dodgers. Only two years ago, I need to remind you just how crazy deep this team is. This is a club that won 106 games, but they lost to the Braves in the NLCS. Look at the rotation. Bueller, Urias, Kershaw. The club acquires Max Scherzer after the Trevor Bauer debacle. Oh, and Tony Gonsolin. I mean, are you kidding? Take a look at this, the position players. Will Smith had emerged behind the plate. He's a star already. Max Muncy, Trey Turner at second. Corey Seager at short. Justin Turner, still a great hitter at third base. The outfield, A.J. Pollock, Cody Bellinger, Mookie Betts. On the bench, Chris Taylor, Gavin Lux, Albert Pujols sitting there. It's only two years ago. But already Trey Turner, Justin Turner, Seager, Bellinger, Pollock are gone. Here's what the lineup looks like now. They still have bets. They added Freddie Freeman. I don't want to bury the lead. One of the best hitters in the game. He's a great player. Will Smith is an elite hitter. Max Muncy has bounced back, but the depth is vastly different. They signed J.D. Martinez to a one-year deal, picked up David Peralta. Then they got Jason Hayward after he got cut. Two or three rookies are in there while they traded to get a glove for a shortstop and Miguel Rojas from the Marlins. Chris Taylor is still there, but he's not the player that he was. They took a step back, but maybe that's the move. Basic GM theory is that you're always trying to win, quote unquote, but that means you're trying to win over a sustained period of time. You may think you can go full throttle each and every year, but in the real world, with multi-year contracts, it doesn't work like that. Andrew Friedman said exactly that seven years ago. I remember that. This is going back. It was a go back to this February of 2016. At the time, the Dodgers were being criticized for not going all in. He said, we feel our responsibility is to do everything we can to sustain a certain level of success. As you look at it over a five-year period or a seven-year period, 10-year period, people go, 10 years, we're able to play through a time period as an upper echelon elite level team. And it's not as easy as people think it is, especially if you devote a large percentage of your focus and resources on just the now. What's he saying? He's saying you cannot go all in every year. Going all in for any particular year leaves you with a depleted farm system or positions filled by aging players with big contracts. Also, here's my take on the psychology of the reset. The Dodgers, for the seventh time in eight years last season, had to answer questions about how it all went wrong after winning a franchise record 111 games. It had to feel insulting 
Yeah, they were stunned by the Padres in a short series, a team they had beaten their own division by 22 games. With the expanded playoffs and the seemingly small advantage of having a number one seed, the Dodgers just weren't as motivated to move the needle from 98 to 111 wins. So they let some veterans walk, essentially sat out the free agent market. They're having some patience with some rookies. They know you can make the wild card and win it all. It's a risk, but it's good for the long-term health of the club. The fact that they still may win the NL West speaks to just how powerful they are.